it. Over here. I'm a boglin. Me and my buddies need a place to hide out. <laughs> It's your number one Boglin boy, Jim Sterling, here with yet another edition of Boglin Watch. It doesn't get very many views. Before we crack on, I just want to talk about the state of the Boglin cloth. Now, I don't know if it's going to show up particularly on the camera, but these Boglin imps that Tim Clark made, the, uh, the material uh, that they're made of, tends to stain things. So over here, I'm not sure if it's visible again, but to me it clearly looks like old spermatozoa has been left here. And we've got some blue cloudy bits here. The whole thing generally looks a bit stained and horrible and grody, uh, but it's not my fault. It was, it was the Boglins. They've kind of leaked on things and on each other um, they've, they, some of them are starting to share other colours. So just a word of warning these imps came out this year if you do buy any of them keep them away from clothes and each other uh, at least for extended periods of time they should be fine for a little bit but don't leave them on a thing for weeks like I did because otherwise your cloth will look spunky. Anyway exciting news uh, over at uh, Tim Clark's website, totims.com, he was selling signed prints of Boglin artwork. And that's very exciting because it's Tim Clark and he worked on Dark Crystal, okay? So he knows what he's talking about. Anyway, Tim Clark, inventor of Boglins, was selling these prints along with new Boglin Wigglers, which are mini Boglin finger puppets, which we'll, we'll take a look at in a moment. Uh, they're basically the, the mini Boglins he'd already made, uh, the, the zombie style mini Boglins. I've got a box over here if I can just reach over. Um, there we go. It's uh, rubbery versions of those. Uh, made of the same material as these. But let's have a look at the print, which I've not actually looked at yet. I've had this for a while, but I was saving it for the video before I unfurled and had a look. So, here we go. Uh, get this nice and framed, put it on my office wall, I think. But here we go. Some artwork of lovable Boglin characters, such as Flurp, no, Flurp, Plunk, Dwork, I'm not even showing this on the camera. Flump, Dwork, Plunk, Flurp, and Blunk, and Blink, and I can't remember that fucking name. As you can see here, it was signed by Tim Clark, and as you can see here, because it's shipped with the boggling finger puppets inside it, it's got green smears on it. So, so that's okay. Fuck. Only a hundred of these prints are in existence, which means they are super exclusive. And I have number three of 100, which, which if I'm perfectly honest, absolutely fucking pisses me off, okay? Because I'm the number one boggling boy. I shouldn't have the number three print. What other Boglin boys were ahead of me, or girls were ahead of me, or NBs were ahead of me, huh? Who was it? Who has two and one? I fucking don't. Obviously having a tantrum because you didn't get number one of a hundred of a, of a drawing uh, is immature and silly and, and everything, but nonetheless I'm bloody annoyed! Anyway, that was the print, the inferior print, the number three print in the world third place as usual bronze medal sterling c minor student all the time now let's look at the boglin wigglers we've got a red one here um and a green one here and another green one here those were the the three that came with it let's just pull this this netting open so we can have a good old look at this a good old rummage at it Come on, you piece of... All right, here we go. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Very exciting times for everyone concerned. Here we are, it's Boglin Wiggler. Let's jam that on the edge of my finger there. The 
that's it really. Now long term boggling watchers should remember Quirk here. Quirk is an electronic boggling from the 80s and I was delighted to find that he worked. Uh, if we just press the button inside, where's that fucking button? If we just press the button inside. <laughs> very exciting uh, and I was very pleased because I didn't really expect it to work um, and, and, and that was cool. Now once I did the video on this particular Boglin, to my amusement eBay popped up with another two of them almost as if they were responding to Boglin Watch uh, and an interesting side effect of that was that the impossible happened because I never expected to be able to get both of them but someone sold Glint. Now Glint is the other electronic Boglin from the 1980s so that's doubly exciting because I never expected to get both of them. Uh, I've only ever seen this on eBay once before unboxed and in a really shitty looking condition so to see it not only boxed but uh, allegedly working was exciting. Uh, not as exciting as the idea that I'm now stimulating my own Boglin economy or Bogle economy. Yeah, that works. It's not my best portmanteau, but it's okay. Anyway, I'm stimulating my own market. I do a Boglin watch video and then I see eBay respond as people watch this highly influential show and think, well shit, maybe I should sell my Boglins. And if Jim doesn't buy it, maybe some of the impressionable children who watch his show will buy them. So yeah, yeah, someone put up a glint. And it could be pure coincidence, of course, that they put it up just after I did my, uh, my video on Quirk. But I choose to believe that I'm fully responsible for it, like I choose to believe I'm fully responsible for anything good that ever happens ever. As usual, we'll have a look at the stats on the side of the box so we know what kind of boggling we're dealing with. Diet, paper, eat paper. Uh, I, I used to eat paper as a child. Probably explains a fair bit. Anyway, habits, yawning, um, not a particular habit of mine. Personality, moody, uh, so I can, I can certainly associate myself with that. I, I, I consider myself a moodsome person. And moody has too many negative connotations. I prefer moodsome. Um, I mean, it still means that I break a lot of things and shout and, and scare people in the street. But Moodsome just sounds classier, so that's what I'm going with. And here is Glint in the flesh, or the rubber as the case may be. We compare Glint to Quirk, let's get Glint there, and here's Quirk. As you can see, facially quite different. Uh, cuter, a little bit more cartoony than regular Boglins. Uh, let's see if I've got one. Why is my Slobster in my plunk box? I don't know. But actually, no, I'm right by the Jimquisition lectern. I can just grab this. So here we go. There's your classic original style Boglin. And these ones, just a little bit more cutesy, but still have a, a kind of ugly, cute vibe to them. Now kiss. Is for me. Now here's the question that's on everybody's fat swollen lips. Does Glint work? You bet your fucking gooch it works. How about that, huh? How about fucking that? Look. Oh, where's the button? Right there? Exciting that it works, exciting that I now have the set of the electronic Boglins, disappointing that they sound the fucking same. And then...
Would it have killed them to have come up with two different sound effects? Now it might be petty and pointless to complain about two different toys from decades ago having the same sound, but I am petty and small-minded and pathetic, so what I'm going to do is write a strongly worded email to the company behind these particular releases, Ideal. I'm going to send them a letter expressing my disappointment at Glinton Quirk's shared voice box and I'm going to demand compensation. So I will keep you updated on any response I get there. And that might be how we kick off 2018. But until then, 2017 is practically gone and thank fuck for that. We will see you next year with more Boglins. We've got so many more to go through. We've got so many more. I haven't even shown you my hairy Boglins yet, huh? Have a look at that. Have a look at that fucking hairy bastard. I'll see you later, all right? Oh, Ideal went defunct in 1997. Oh.